Okay, so one way to help this would be, it's a bit late to do it for satellites that have been up there for 30 years, but for new satellites, we want to make sure that uh, if something un untracked kits them again with no trouble. But what we really want to do is make sure they don't stay up after they finish their useful life because they're then the more and more chance That's of hitting right. something else. That's right. In fact, you now need a plan of deorbiting your satellite after you put it up. Now, this wasn't a thing in the 60s and 70s because who would have thought we would have pollute space? Well, it turns out humans are very efficient at that, as you said. So you now have to have a plan of deorbiting your satellite. And it doesn't matter how big it is. It could be a small one. Now, this is one of the advantages of the small ones. A little bit easier to do. Um, but is it big or small? Even the International Space Station has to have a plan of how it's going to be deorbited. And the space station is about the size of a football field. Now, the best way is to have it re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Now, the idea is that as you have junk re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, slowly, you know, through all those different forces as we've talked about before, the atmosphere creates drag, creates a little bit of friction, and slowly breaks apart your satellite. If you do it at the right angle, you, you know, if you hit it head on, you're not going to get that much friction. What you really want is to skim the atmosphere lots and lots and lots of times. So you almost shave off little bits of it every time, meaning that those bits probably burn up in the Earth's atmosphere and the majority of the satellite is destroyed through the Earth's atmosphere. Now, this is a, a normal policy um, that is done. So this is the... Um, a cargo container from ESA called the Jules Verne. And here they deliberately entered at an angle so that it would burn up upon re-entry. And this is exactly what you can start to see. As it gets the right angle, you start to get that massive amount of friction. You can start to see, sorry, it's jittering. They're trying to track it on a boat. Um, it's a lot harder than one may imagine. Um, you can start to see at different times the light is starting to burn up. Uh, and you can see different material clearly starting to fragment off because that's what they want. If that fragments in space, it's going to stay in space. If it fragments in the Earth's atmosphere, it will either burn up in the Earth's atmosphere or land, hopefully, somewhere safe on Earth. I and guess if it's looking like a cloud of debris. It's exactly. And this, this is a great picture because this cloud of debris, had it been left in space, would be a cloud of debris in space. So the ideal way is to have your junk re-entered so it fragments nicely, yep. but that's not always the case. Yep. I and mean, presumably what you do with that, if, if something's at a very low Earth orbit, like only 200 kilometers up, it'll do it by itself. Exactly, that's right. If something's at a higher orbit, which most things are, because you don't want them doing it prematurely, then you're going to need to save a bit of fuel. That's right. Some of your maneuvering fuel, and then use it to drop the orbit uh, into, into the atmosphere, and then let the atmosphere do the rest of slowing that's it down exactly. and destroying it. And this is, you know, as we said, you can use satellites to maneuver, but if you use too much of your fuel to maneuver, then you don't have enough to deorbit, so it turns into a junk. So there's this really back and forth give that you have. So you slowly bring down your satellite safely so you don't crash into it, and then you have a very clear plan of, well, if we enter at this angle, at this speed, at this time, we will end up in an orbit that is taking us over the Earth's atmosphere and burning up. Now, the other consideration we have to have here is, okay, well, when we re-enter, this was happening over the South Pacific Ocean, you want to re-enter over an uninhabited place, right, Paul? Absolutely. Uh, we don't want something large and metal landing on our heads. And this has happened. This is a, um, in Saudi Arabia. This is a tank off a satellite uh, landing in the desert of Saudi Arabia. This was not as planned as it would. The satellite lost control, so it naturally re-entered. But because it naturally re-entered, the angle wasn't right, the speed wasn't right, and the location wasn't right, and a very large piece made its way to the ground. And no one's ever been hurt That's right. by a, uh, one of these things landing on their heads. There's a lot of panic every time it could That's land right. anywhere. But still, the vast majority of the Earth is uninhabited. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, you think about oceans, Antarctica, deserts, deserts that's right. Rainforest, tundra. There's a lot of places that you can safely land it, which means that's good. There's a lot of places you can safely plan for it to re-enter. And in fact, most debris uh, is planned to re-enter over something called Point Nemo, the most remote place on Earth. It's kind of a slap in the face sort of title, but it is the furthest point away from any land in the South Pacific Ocean. 
And the idea is that as it re-enters, okay, well, maybe it's off by a few kilometers because it's actually hard to perfectly calculate. A few hundred kilometers. That's sure. right. You're not going to land on anyone because the nearest land is over 2,600 kilometers away. So whether it's up to Fiji or Tahiti or Easter Island or Antarctica, if you're off by that range, you're still going to end up in the South Pacific Ocean. Now, it means the South Pacific Ocean is home to kind of a spacecraft graveyard, uh, that there's bits of it that have landed there uh, and ended up in the ocean. And this is the future for the International Space Station. There's no way of safely of disposing that thing. Like all spacecraft, it's going to have a finite lifetime. You don't want to leave it up there so it breaks apart. And yeah, it's the size of a football field. So when it is time, they will lower its orbit, slowly nosedive it, and it will end up as a very big piece in the South Pacific Ocean.